namin eh, alam yun, sir. Hindi pa ako namin inabutan yun, sir. Can you enlighten us? <laughs> o nga, sabi ko, hindi ata ako nanood ng Marimar. <laughs> Tapos bigla yung sasabihin, sino ba si Serio? <laughs> Dati, tinatagalog lang. Eh. Yun na yun. Ngayon, may subtitle pa. Pinahirapan pa eh. <laughs> Mahirap kasi daw dubbing. Mas mahal. Oh. <laughs> Pero may mga ano naman, ma'am? May mga K-drama naman na may English ano uh, dubbing. Talaga? Oh, mm. ano, Meron din. Ikaw pa nakita. At tin, inaano ko, tinitingnan ko yung mga ano na to, itong mga... Ta- tanong mo si Madonna, ma'am. <laughs> o nga, si Madonna. Asan si Madonna? Madonna, alin ba yung meron mo nun? <laughs> Dabing. Ara, hindi na right. ako. No? Sir Roland, uh, one minute to go. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Parang yung <laughs> Tapos, sir, lang, bali, ano? after po nung uh, presentation, siguro just... Kung pwede po kayo mag-stay, then we'll just have a fo- photo after kung i-cut yung uh, streaming a little later. Sige, oo. Alright, sir. Thank you, sir. Sige, sir. Uh, one minute. Let's just, ano lang. Ma'am Gee, hindi ako nanonood ng may dub na English. <laughs> <laughs> Mas gusto ko yung accent nila, marinig ko. Pero pag gabi lang din ako nanonood. Pag inaantok na ako. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Pagka na stress na ako. <laughs> oh, yan, Madonna naka-record na 'yung sinabi mo. <laughs> Nakakatulugan ko na nga eh. Ay, Judy. <laughs> Tapos uulitin ko na lang. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ay. Uh, maybe we could start, uh, ma'am. Pwede na po okay. tayo. Okay. Yeah, better do. Uh, I think our students are already here with us. Uh, ha. Okay. So, ma'am, we can start na. Para mukhang madami yung <laughs> tayong ano eh, uh, interactions a little later. So, maybe we can start now. All right. Uh, Joyce, are we okay? Uh, yes, sir. The streaming right. is live now. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, here with us in Zoom and in YouTube, we welcome each and every one of you to the second of the webinar series that uh, the Environmental Landscape Studio Laboratory of the College <coughs> of Architecture, University of the Philippines, Diliman, has organized and presented uh, for today. Uh, here in us with Zoom. Uh, we have with us, we would like to welcome our students and our faculty members while we have uh, streaming on YouTube uh, page of the Environmental Landscape Studio Laboratory YouTube page. We have also with us other participants who are watching us from that platform. So just to remind everyone for today's webinar, uh, this is just a reminder for our Zoom participants to kindly turn the audio to mute mode and to turn your videos off so as not to disrupt today's presentation. Uh, for us here in Zoom, you may use the chat box for your questions, uh, which we will direct to our resource speakers during the open forum. I think it goes the same with uh, those who are with us in the Zoom, uh, through the YouTube page, YouTube link also. Right, so today we are very fortunate to have with us uh, two speakers uh, for today's webinar. Uh, we shall uh, introduce first our first speaker and then his presentation will um, con- uh, follow, after which um, our second presenter will be uh, presenting after. Right. So for our first speaker for today, he is the current president of <coughs> After completing his Bachelor of Science in Architecture in the Technological Institute of the Philippines, he became a licensed architect in 2006. He has attended several special courses such as the ABC Waters Professionals Core Module CU3 and the Design, Construction, and Maintenance of Swales and Buffer Strips. He has attended events and talks such as the Bahrain International Garden Festival, 
the PALA 2017 Landscape Festival, and the 2019 Executive Forum for Local Fiscal Management, the two latter events he attended as a guest speaker. Dedicating more than 16 years of his practice studying, conceptualizing, and realizing his design works in the interest of architecture and architectural building sustainability and solutions, let us all welcome the current president of the Landscape Contractors and Industry Association of the Philippines, or Lakisam architect Roland Aguliana. Sir? Hi, Franklin. Thank you Hi, for sir. that uh, ano, napakagandang introduction. Ayan. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Roland. As uh, Franklin has said, I'm actually an architect. And I'm currently the uh, I'm with Lakisap, the Landscape Contractors Industry Specialist Association of the Philippines. I'm the current president and also from Cube System. And so uh, uh, we do a lot of uh, building sustainability, building architectural uh, solutions uh, locally in the in the Philippines. Before uh, uh, before that, I actually was working with Sir Efren Aurelio. And then uh, went to Singapore, practiced uh, architecture there, and went back here in the Philippines to do uh, sky rise greenery. Okay, so uh, I think I'll start with my presentation now, uh, since everybody's here, here already. So uh, the presentation today is all about elevated landscapes or uh, what we call actually sky rise greenery. So uh, I think we have uh, like about 30 or so minutes for this presentation. I have about 80 slides, so I'll try to speed up a bit because I have about 20 to 25 seconds per slide. Okay, so uh, I think uh, questions will be later uh, after the presentation. So just uh, scribble down any notes that you have in mind later so that we can actually go through them. Uh, if you have any uh, uh, queries and suggestions later on, okay? So uh, I would like to start my presentation actually on the whys of uh, elevated landscapes. So elevated landscapes or sky rise greenery uh, is actually encompassing both rooftop greenery and vertical greenery. So uh, it's very simple actually, you have rooftops and you have vertical greenery because what, what we try to do is that uh, when you, whenever we do a building, we try, we of course uh, uh, use that space and try to, uh, use as much space for greenery. So if we use like 70% of the land uh, for building construction, we try to uh, have more than 30% of greenery, which is uh, what's normally uh, yung natitira sa greenery. We try to make it on vertical or on the roof so that we can have more, more than 30%. So that's uh, basically elevated landscapes, okay? so. What are the advantages of uh, uh, elevated landscapes or sky rise greenery? So I always want to start on this presentation on the whys of landscapes because whenever, whenever we go to our clients, we normally uh, give them a lot, of, a lot of suggestions and do, uh, to, to do a lot of these things. But uh, the core values of elevated landscapes has to be there, especially now that uh, a lot of projects are going for lead. So it's actually more for sustainability. So uh, elevated landscapes actually help on biophilic and sustainability. When I say biophilic, that means uh, you know, the innate uh, want of man to be close to nature uh, because, well, we all want to be in nature, especially now. Uh, you've seen no, the search of plantitos and plantitas uh, uh, during the lockdown. Talagang. We want to have uh, more green, it, it, it helps us uh, cope up uh, with stress and a lot of things, especially now that it's pandemic. And of course, one of the other major things is sustainability. So uh, give me about five minutes. I just want to run through a bit about this on uh, why it helps a bit global warming. And uh, let's just actually uh, say that we all agree that global warming is real because there are a lot of people who, who still say that it's, it's a hoax and uh, it's not real. So let's just, for the sake of this presentation, uh, uh, all, all realize that global warming is really uh, happening. So 
75% of carbon dioxide is actually in the cities. That's very obvious because we have a lot of cars here. We have a lot of air conditioning. We have a lot of building materials uh, in which building materials, of course, also uh, um, create a lot of carbon dioxide whenever you, you manufacture them. So uh, building elevated landscapes actually help on the heat island effect. So heat island effect is actually uh, about uh, the solar radiation because you, if you have a lot of carbon dioxide, uh, you have greenhouse effect in which the re-radiated heat from the sun actually bounces back to the earth. And what happens is that uh, when there is little or, or, or almost no vegetation in cities, uh, it is hotter. No? So little vegetation or evaporation causes cities to remain warmer than the surrounding countryside. That's why at night, normally you'll have more air conditioning uh, because the radiated heat still uh, affects us during the night, especially uh, on, on urban areas. So what, what uh, Skyrest Greenery actually helps is that it reduces uh, urban heat island effect. So if you have a green roof, of course, the rooftop greenery reduces the roof surface temperature by, say, about maximum of 31 degrees Celsius. And if you have uh, green walls, uh, it, the, the temperature reduction efficiency uh, also varies from system of typology, but it always helps because uh, greenery can reduce re-radiated re heat only about 20% of that energy that falls on a tree leaf is reflected. So if you have a tree against, uh, say, a concrete wall, you know, a concrete wall will be uh, reflecting more uh, heat and energy uh, compared to uh, a leaf of a tree or you know a shrubs or you, you uh, ground cover and so a single tree of of course if you have sky rise greenery you also have trees because later on I will be talking about the differences uh, there are extensive and in intensive uh, uh, green roofs so if you have an intensive green roof you will have trees. So a single tree can evapotranspirate 40 gallons of water in a day. And it actually offset the what lamp. So it's, it's really great to have all of these figures. You know, uh, it, it, uh, at least it educates us. It, it improves the quality of air by absorption of air pollution and dust. Everybody knows this. And uh, through process of photosynthesis, 155 square meters of plant surface area can produce enough oxygen for 10 humans a day. So we've actually done all of these uh, calculations before when we were doing some of our projects, especially the biggest uh, green wall facade here in Southeast Asia, which is the podium. Later, I will be uh, discussing more of that. Yeah. So redu it, in summary, it, it uh, has a reduction of cooling load. Why? Because when you have... Uh, when, when the city is warmer, you use more electricity, you use more air conditioning. Uh, aside from that, it improves also acoustic insulation and, of course, your property value. Because if you have a lot of amenities, especially if, it's, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're, uh, say, condominium has a lot of greens and amenities like that, uh, people want uh, this kind of amenities and they are actually considering this whenever they buy properties. Okay. So enough about that. Let's uh, start with the uh, green roofs and green walls. So the first recorded elevated landscape, which is man-made, was actually the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. And so actually there, has not, there are no scientific, uh, scientific uh, archaeological uh, no, uh, diggings of the Gardens of Babylon yet. It's all about scriptures. Pa lang, no? So we've read about this, but what the what the test tells us is that it is actually about 24 meters high and about 80 meters uh, in width, uh, union scale ng gardens of Babylon. But what is great about this is how they were actually able to bring this to life uh, using uh, different methods on how to bring auto, uh, irrigation uh, to the top of the structure way down to the level uh, to the ground floor level so uh, one of the theories is using archimedes screw so 
uh, yung Archimedes who has been used uh, thousands of years ago, uh, they said that the garden was actually watered through a complex irrigation system fed by machines hidden from public view that pumped water from the river of Euphrates, 80 feet below to the top of the roof garden. So that's about 80 feet is about 24, 25 meters high. Uh, the structure supported the forest of tree, exotic plants, wildlife, and per perpetually green grass. So uh, you would imagine you know, if they have trees there that grew to, to be as tall as 50 feet, it's really a very intensive sky rise elevated uh, garden talaga. Okay, so those were the ancient times. Meron na yan. We did not invent that uh, in the modern days. But we also have uh, modern day hanging gardens like this one. This is actually a heartbeat at Bedok, Singapore. It's a project that uh, I personally uh, was able to work with briefly uh, during my stay in Ong and Ong uh, landscape uh, in Singapore. So this is actually, uh, a, a, it, I, I look at this and it is actually uh, more probably almost the same scale as the gardens of Babylon. Huh? So it's about six meters high, uh, six feet, uh, six floors high, and it's about 24, 26 meters. Yan. So yung scale ng garden is, gardens of Babylon is almost the same as this. So I, I really like this project, uh, project. And it's really intensive, a lot of shrubs, a lot of trees. Uh, no mosquitoes. Later, we will discuss about that and how to prevent all of that uh, uh, challenges. Uh, this is this was uh, the project uh, when when we started. No, hindi pa ganun ka lago yung mga shrubs. It's not yet that, but now it's like this. It's really, really very nice. We also have a few other projects like this. Uh, I did this for a car park. Uh, in Singapore as well. I have to apologize because most of the projects that I will be showing are from Singapore because I uh, that is where I have actually started uh, doing all this elevated landscape. So this is a car park. Uh, it's very simple. I just uh, used uh, Crystallasia, uh, Singapore vines, you know, uh, just to cover up the, the uh, openings in the car park. So it's actually... Uh, Green, uh, green mark project, you know. So here in here in the Philippines, we have lead projects. In Singapore, we call it green mark. Uh, so we have products like green label. Later, we will also discuss about that. So the scale of this is almost the same scale as the Gardens of Babylon as well. So ganyan yung height niya. So you would imagine uh, how how they were able to do that in in ancient times is really really very fascinating. You know, this is it. Uh, uh, in another angle, so very simple. And before, kung may Archimedes screw, now we all we all use uh, auto irrigated systems. So it's really very important to have these things, especially when it's pandemic. Because if you imagine uh, when we shut down uh, Metro Manila, when Metro Manila was locked down, you no, know, there were no gardeners. So if kung wala kang auto irrigation. Uh, your project is dead. Wala nang magdidilig. And it was summer. It was almost the same day. Actually, it was uh, yesterday, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, yung first year. no. So it's actually coming into summer, summertime. So kung wala kang auto-irrigation sa system mo, not only on elevated landscape, but also on ground floor levels, it's very, very difficult to maintain projects without uh, auto-irrigation nowadays. Lalo na ngayon, you don't know when the lockdown is coming, you know shutdowns of projects. Of course, ang Pilipinas hindi rin magpapa halo. Ayan. So meron tayong ating sariling auto irrigation system. Madami tayong tubig eh. Ayan. So uh, galing, di ba? You'll see a lot of uh, fire, fire truck or fire uh, water pumps. Yan, yan ang manual uh, semi-drip irrigation natin. So later we will, we will actually discuss uh, a bit about uh, uh, auto irrigation then siguro uh, just to give you a bit of an idea uh, okay moving on so uh, that's the introduction for the sky rest greenery or elevated landscapes so now we are moving on to the types of green roof okay so <clears throat> uh, we have two different types of green roofs this is uh, an example of an extensive green roof 
uh, which was actually blended to the ground floor level. So makikita niyo parang uh, talagang nagko-combine siya. It, it almost blends into the surrounding, the roof itself, which is normally uh, it, it could have been just uh, plain concrete. So now it's uh, it is more biophilic, it looks better, and uh, it helps in the environment. This is actually a project I did in Singapore. Uh, it's called the uh, Flamingo Valley. Flamingo Valley, yeah. It's about ten year a uh, ten year old project. <clears throat> uh, this is another project uh, extends uh, showing another type of extensive green roof uh, that blends in uh, with the other surroundings. So uh, that's extensive. So extensive normally is just using ground covers and uh, and lawn, no. So uh, of course, pag sinabi mong extensive, it's uh, a bit cheaper because uh, the structural load is actually lesser. And uh, when you have lesser structural load, you also have uh, lesser uh, soil depth. You know, you, you'll be spending a bit more, uh, lesser money on, uh, on other items like uh, soil, uh, plant materials, you know, uh, later we will discuss a, a bit more about that. Just want to show you another type of uh, green roof, which is intensive green roof, okay? So uh, this is Park Royal. It's not my project. It's from Woha, but it's a very, very good example of intensive green roof. So ito talaga, they have shrubs, they have uh, all types of ferns, palms, and trees, you know? So building an intensive green roof is actually a bit more complex uh, than, uh, uh, than the image itself because when you have intensive green roof, you really have to uh, uh, go through a lot of things like structural stability, what is the dead load of the trees, what is the live load, how, how many occupants, how do you drain it off, how do you make sure that it doesn't fund. So madame, madame. Well, uh, the, the time that we have is only 30 minutes today. I think I only have 15 minutes left, but uh, we will not go through each and every uh, uh, thing about you know, structural stability. We can do that in another forum uh, uh, later on. But uh, of course, in the Philippines, hindi na naman tayo magpapatago. We also have our own green roofs uh, projects. Now, this is a project that... Uh, uh, I did when I was still with uh, Sir Efren Aurelio when I was with his uh, studio before. Uh, it's, I think everybody's familiar. This is actually SM North no? Sky Gardens. So SM North Sky Gardens, actually we did this because at that time, Trinoma was uh, about to be completed. So Hansi wanted to have something uh, to, uh, to pull in more uh, people back to SM North because uh, they are expecting a lot of people will be going to Trinoma. That's why uh, this was actually here. Okay. So uh, uh, when we did this SM North uh, Skyrise uh, Garden, uh, it was very simple. No? We only used uh, river stones aggregates uh, for the drainage system and then uh, just simple soil, no? not engineered soil. Ngayon, madami na, we have we have a lot of different soils uh, to make it uh, lightweight. No, madami ng plant media na pwedeng idagdag sa soil to make it lightweight because of uh, structural stability. So we'll just go through a bit of that now. Uh, okay, so the basics, the, the most simple setup of uh, uh, green roof is using drain cells. Okay, so drain cells actually it's a uh, it's a plastic material. We used recycled materials in our project, but it's a plastic material with holes. So what actually happens is that it helps on draining the soil, the plant media, whatever plant media you're using. So of course, you need to have a geotextile layer about, above it para hindi mag-erode yung, yung, yung soil. Uh, before, we use only aggregates ilalim to, to help drain, drain the soil. But now, actually, this, this uh, material has been around since uh, I was still studying, but uh, we haven't, Philippines, actually, in the, in, in the context of our construction industry, we haven't used that yet because I, I think people still think that this is an unnecessary uh, cost in their project. But actually, it's, 
it makes the project more cheaper because the dead load is uh, lower because it's very lightweight. Then installation is uh, very easy. You know, if you have river stones or aggregate, how do you even bring it up sa, sa, in your uh, in your rooftop? It's very difficult. You have to use the the gondola or you have to use the crane tower to help you uh, bring all this. No, uh, of course, aside by yung soil don, so it's really it really actually helps a lot, not only on drainage but also on the construction side and the maintenance side as well. Because if you have all of this your plant actually thrives better because it has lesser panding okay so this is the simplest form you can do you can use this actually for intensive and extensive uh, uh, green roofs but for for extensive green roofs because normally you will only use uh, a, a minimum soil of say about 100 mm mabilis siyang matuyo no especially in our climate Dito sa Pilipinas, like in the uh, around 2 p.m., 3 p.m., if you have 50 mm, 100 mm soil depth for your lawn or, or ground cover, by, by the time it hits 2 p.m., tuyong tuyo na yung, uh, yung plant media mo. So I, I would normally use uh, a system that has water retention. At least it helps uh, on, on uh, giving moisture to the plant media. Uh, so it depends. Uh, one of the things also that uh, why we use this is because for lead, because whenever we have lead uh, projects going for lead, you know, uh, they always compute on how not only uh, what kind of materials that you use, but how it actually affects the project. So for instance, if you use water retention systems like this, it actually helps on reducing the water that you need. Uh, to irrigate the soil. So it's it's uh, one of the plus plus when you are going for lead projects. So uh, there are a lot of types of water retention systems. Uh, so there are 50 mm water retention systems and then they are even bigger. So it, it really depends on uh, how much uh, how much water you want to uh, to use. Uh, when you are irrigating if you want to use lesser then you can actually use a green roof system that has more uh, water retention uh, capability and so it really helps especially if the soil depth is very very shallow okay so uh, there are also green roof systems that you can actually uh, uh, pre-grow in the nursery because sometimes you have projects that uh, you know uh, normally, when you when projects are in a rush, they give you like one month only or two months uh, for you to be able to 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 uh, do the project uh, because of uh, handovers. So normally, if uh, the contractor is delayed, then they'll give you like one week one week uh, deadline only because the handover is delayed. Then you can actually pre-grow uh, these things to the nursery using. Uh, in roof systems that that are like puzzles, no? you, you can pre-grow at uh, the nursery and then you can bring it at site. Make plants na siya ready to install in one day. You can actually uh, plant the whole green roof. Uh, of course, depending on the area of uh, the green roof, but it's very easy. You, know? uh, you can also put it in corrugated roofs, but normally I would prefer na sana uh, the the uh, elevated landscapes be there already from day one whenever we start the the design uh, concept no? Kasi at least the structural will always already be able to compute the dead load of the uh, uh, plant media and other materials that you need uh okay so i'll just uh, quicken this up a bit because i have a bit more like 10 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, you have also trees. Lalo na kapag may intensive uh, green roof ka, you have to put trees. And in Philippine context, it's very, very difficult to have trees on Sky Garden because of uh, storm. No, yung, yung Our typhoon here in the Philippines is great, getting worse every year. No, I think we have signal number four na. Dati number three lang nung bata ako. So now, uh, whenever you have projects, uh, uno, uh, especially as contractors, we Whenever there's typhoon, we always uh, uh, pray during the night that some of our trees will not fall. No, so 
we can reduce this risk by actually using three anchoring systems. So which actually I, I would like to uh, tell all my colleagues and the, all the architects and all our clients that this is actually not an, not an additional cost for them, but actually an insurance no, for safety. Uh, especially during the typhoon. It's better to anchor your tree whenever you have a uh, sky rise greenery talaga because of, uh, uh, of our uh, typhoons here in the Philippines which are getting worse by the year. Okay? Of course, uh, there are clients that doesn't want to do any uh, maintenance. Uh, some, some projects are, uh, also use artificial green roofs no, or artificial lawns. So there are a lot of projects using that already. Is it biophilic? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, is it sustainable? Maybe or maybe not. Why? Because uh, actually, if you have an artificial green roof, there's a lot of things that you can do with this as well. If you can imagine, uh, if you have an uh, artificial green roof like this, it still uh, bounces off uh, lesser uh, heat. Than a, uh, than a concrete. And if you want to do a uh, rainwater harvesting system, the, the bottom of this lab actually becomes its, uh, uh, you, you can do this as a whole tank itself or you uh, uh, capturing area more. So it actually can help as well, uh, not only for aesthetics. No? So there are a lot of things that you can do with artificial green roof. So uh, that's basically a summary of it. Uh, so we'll move forward to the types of green wall. Uh, already. Uh, so just a quick one, I'll just show you one of the most important projects that we've done here in the Philippines, uh, SM Kepo Podium. It's about 2,650 square meters of uh, sky rise uh, green wall, uh, sky rise greenery. If I'm not mistaken, this is still the biggest uh, facade in, in one facade, na, in, in one building. Uh, here in Southeast Asia, because uh, because there are a lot of green walls, but some of the green walls are are in, uh, in not not in one facade. So this project is very special because it's one in one facade. So when we started this, we we actually designed everything from from the structural steel to the auto irrigation to to the plant media that we use. So this image actually shows on how we actually started it. Uh, we did the whole framing system. Uh, so uh, one of the challenges on a green wall is actually on how to maintain it. No? So later, we, we, we I have a few slides for that later, I'll show you. So uh, for this instance, because it's very difficult to really maintain it, we decided to do a catwalk at the back and have everything with swing doors. So this is... Uh, uh, when we started installing the, the green wall planters, the pots, and then this is the back of the green wall. So everything actually is a 600 mm with door uh, with about 2.1 height. So it's uh, it's most most probably about the same height as a door, no. And what's challenging about this is that uh, when you have a swing door like this, the auto irrigation has to move as well because if the swing if the door swings. The, the irrigation system has to swing together with the door. Otherwise, all the, the fittings will loosen up and you'll have problems on leakage and things like that. Okay, so this is, this is it right now, uh, 2,650 uh, square meters of uh, green wall. That's about 60,000 plants installed. Okay, we actually pre-grown the plants at the nursery. So from day one, malag malago na siya. The, the challenge with this right now is maintenance because the client still, uh, well, in our instance, uh, they haven't given us a maintenance contract. So you'd see a lot of uh, plants uh, deteriorating. That's why we always encourage our, uh, our clients that maintenance actually is a part of not only sky rise greenery but all landscape uh, installation because this is not like a hardscape tile that when you install it okay na siya maganda na siya no for 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 especially for sky rise greenery it's you're dealing with live plants no so normally you have 10 trees one of them will die hindi mo alam kung bakit namatay sometimes uh, that's that's how it is. That's why maintenance is really a very very crucial part of elevated landscape. 
Uh, okay, so this is another example of uh, green wall that we've done here in the Philippines. Uh, this is actually Montage Cebu. It's actually a project of uh, uh, the good-looking Mr. Vic Doluog. And so, uh, yan ang, uh, uh, one of the pioneering projects at Cebu for Skyrise Greenery. Uh, we have not seen uh, as large as this scale yet. Uh, in Cebu, so that's why we're we're saying that this is actually a very very pioneering project. Okay, this is how it looks from day one when we uh, it was planted about a week ago uh, during this stage. So we actually pre-grown this as well. So medyo okay na itsura niya from day one. And what we've used is a plant system like this. Uh, normally, I would use something with the water water retention system as well. Madaming klase ng uh, green wall systems, uh, uh, but I would prefer to have something with uh, with water uh, capturing system. So at least if you if the irrigation fails for at least two days or three days uh, before pamakita ng maintenance team mo, at least hindi hindi mamamatay yung yung plants mo. And so there are big ones, there are small ones. There are planters that you can do back to back. There are also cassette system, which I do not recommend because when you do cassette system, uh, you have to pre-grow them sa nursery uh, at least four to six months because you have to start small because the holes are very small. So you have to pre-grow them horizontally before you can actually uh, uh, bring it up vertically. So this is a very, very uh, complicated system. There are also foam systems. Basically, when you have foam systems, it's actually more of a hydroponic system now because uh, you don't have plant media. Uh, so you're actually relying on auto irrigation system. And uh, yung fertilizer system, which is most probably going to be injected also on your auto irrigation system. Uh, Okay, so I'll just speed it up a bit because uh, I think we have a, I overspent my time already. We're about five minutes over my time. So just show you a bit more projects. Uh, it doesn't have to be a very complicated and expensive green wall system with planters. No, this one is a project I've, I've done using only vines. So, so I actually used Tamburja only for this project. Also one of the tallest uh, sky rise greenery in Singapore. It's Vista Residences, and it's only vines, no? So at the back of this uh, vine wall is actually the staircase system for the emergency exit, no? St stair stairwell yang buong yan, uh, which we covered with vines. So every floor, meron kaming planters, and we have water retention system. Everything is auto-irrigated. So it doesn't have to be very complicated. You can actually do this. We're doing this for the upcoming project of uh, Red Residences. So we'll be seeing something like this in the near future at the uh, Makati area. So vine system again. Uh, of course, uh, it, projects can vary from, from big projects where maintenance is very, very difficult to reach to small projects like Shell. Uh, we're doing a few projects with Shell right now uh, using planter systems as well. Of course, uh, sky rise greenery or vertical gardens also doesn't have to be always outdoors. You can also do it indoors. Uh, this is a project that we've done with uh, Sheraton, Sheraton Hotel. It's actually collab, so it's a it's a, a new a new uh, installation. Uh, the grow lights that we use here are our from our own research and development. So, uh, madami namang klase ng grow lights. So, of course, particularly this grow light is made 100% uh, uh, in the Philippines. Uh, so, uh, when you do green walls indoors, it is very, very uh, challenging. So, you really need to have more light, especially if the green wall is uh, very far from a window where there's natural sunlight. Kailangan nyo talaga magkaroon ng grow light system, not only irrigation system, okay? So just a few more projects showing you indoor uh, landscape here. Maintenance, of course, is a very, very important part of it. Uh, the number one question I always ask my clients is how do we reach it? So some projects, they have gondola. Some projects, they don't. This is a project at uh, uh, 
Singapore uh, Terminal 4. No? So we have to use a man lift to reach the green wall and contain them. Uh, sometimes we use uh, scissor lift. So it depends. It really depends on the project. Uh, but it is very, very crucial that we are able to reach the green wall because you still have to do monthly maintenance uh, like trimming, weeding, uh, uh, putting fertilizer and things. Right. So this is actually uh, uh, how we maintain uh, the project at the Cebu, Montage Cebu. So it's also a swing door system. Uh, so it's it's easier, especially when you have uh, back maintenance talaga, uh, rather than using a man lift. Because when you use a man lift, you have you know sometimes you have to to get permits, uh, barangay permits for you to be able to use all these uh, cranes and man lifts. No, so it's easier if you if you've already designed it from day one already. Yeah. Of course, there are also clients na ayaw talagang mag-maintain. They don't want to have irrigation. They don't, they don't have enough sunlight. So some of them opt to do uh, artificial green walls. No? So uh, artificial green walls, actually, there's a lot of, uh, of, of installations that, uh, that I have seen already. Uh, but it's doing it indoors is different from doing it outdoors you have to be very careful on what you use you have to make sure that the, the materials that you are the, that you will be using if you're using artificial green walls uh, green, uh, green wall materials it has to be weather tested material so that it doesn't fade you know, some 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 materials fade easily some of them as well as as weather testing so you have to make sure that you uh, do your research before using any materials you now so uh, is this biophilic? Uh, I don't know. Maybe if it's is, is it sustainable? I don't I don't think so. So it's I look at it more of a art installation rather than uh, something sustainable. No, so it's like putting a carpet or putting a, a painting. So it's more of an art installation. This is Robinson's Cebu, by the way. Uh, some clients want to have half of the half of the materials to be real, half of them uh, are artificial. So some of clients wants us na kung ano lang yung maaabot nila, yun yung real, tapos sa, sa taas, artificial na. Uh, some of them uh, also want to use uh, moss. There, there are moss material that we can use. Most of the moss material that you will use are uh, already preserved moss. No, Hindi na sila buhay. Some of them... Uh, are colored or dyed na, uh, on different colors, but most of them are actually preserved moss already. They are real moss. They are not artificial, but uh, they are already preserved. Okay, uh, So you can do it in indoors. This is a very famous uh, facade that we, we did for interior, interior green world that we did for uh, Pinoy Big Brother. Uh, so that's it. Uh, okay, I just I'll just uh, speed up a bit more. Of course, uh, another thing that we can do right now is uh, urban uh, urban gardening or urban farming. Yeah, so there, if you have a rooftop, you can actually use it as a soil base. There are a lot of things now, uh, you know, you have aeroponics. Aeroponics is very different from hydroponics. Hydroponics is where plants are actually submerged to water 24 hours. Aeroponics is that you have misting or you have timer. No? So you have like five minutes by water, five minutes without water. So you expose them to oxygen, you expose them to water, uh, something like that. So you have towers like this, you have zip growth uh, technology already. Some of them even use it for indoors already, you know, for urban, urban uh, farm, indoor vertical farming. So the, te the technology is already there. It's actually uh, up to us designers and architects and of course you landscape architects to be uh, to really uh, push on these new technologies uh, uh, to, your, to, to our clients. So, so it doesn't have to be big. If you have a small balcony setup, you can do aeroponics setup as well on your balcony balconies. And there's also a, other urban urban farming innovations like this, 
where uh, auto it's not auto irrigated it's actually like a ferris wheel no so when the when the plant goes up it exposes to the sunlight and when it goes down it actually dips into the water uh giving them uh irrigation uh sort of manual and so it's it's a very very interesting urban farming innovation okay so uh that's about it uh I hope you you've learned a bit from 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 me today, and uh, I hope that we all become uh, part of the change that we want to be uh, in the environment. Thank you very much. All right, uh, thank you, Architect Aguliana. Actually, yeah. sir, it's a speed. Uh, it's a I speed. Know, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know you're pressed for time, and I have a meeting that we are going. We are going to invite you again for uh you know for more uh oh. time also for the next yes. uh hopefully next lectures or webinars. Thank you, yeah. sir. We Thank enjoy you. that Thank you for very having much. Me. Thank yes. you, sir. Okay. All right, all right. Next, we shall move on to our um second speaker. Um, I think he's also here with us in the Zoom link already. Um he heads a team of designers and construction supervisors to form terrains and open space or trop in Bangkok, Thailand. A Harvard graduate school of design student, he has an affinity for natural materials favoring stone, water, wood, light, and sound, which is evident in the firm's projects that range from resorts and residential communities to sculptures and sustainable projects. He was a design director of Bensley Design Studio and was an associate in Hargreaves Associates in Cambridge, Massachusetts. With 20 years of experience, he is ranked as one of the top 10 landscape architects in the world by the Landscape Architects Network. He is also a of 40 under 40 awards for international designers by Perspective Magazine in Hong Kong. And recently, he received the best in typology landscape architecture firm this year. We have with us the design director of TRO, landscape architect, Pop Kong Kong San. Sir? Hello. Good morning. morning, sir. Having me, I, still, I cannot find a chair screen thing in my screen. Uh, uh, do you do know where it's a chair screen? Um, sir, if you uh, go to the... Uh, Lower part, there's a share screen uh, option. Can you see? Can you see? Uh, I don't have it in my computer. It's okay. I, I will log on from another computer. Sorry. Okay, uh, sir. I only have a share content, but I don't have share screen at the bottom of my... Uh, sir, I think you've already been given host, um, Joyce. Yes. I think... Sorry, I cannot see the share screen at all. All right. Uh, I think, sir, you've been given a uh, hmm. how to share your screen. Uh, I don't have it. I don't have a authority to share screen. I only have can share photos. Uh, okay, sir. Hmm. Okay, okay, I. I <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Uh, what happened? All right. So I think, uh, sir, are you here? No. I uh, sir, yeah. Uh, so maybe we'll just wait for um, sir. Hey, yeah. uh, pardon. Um, this is uh, Apple. Um, uh, pip up assistant. I I get uh, she will uh, re coming again. Uh huh. In in one minute. Okay, sir. Okay, okay, ma'am. All right. Sorry. Yeah, we, we can wait. So uh, maybe uh, while waiting for uh. Sir, uh, landscape architect of Constanti to return. Uh, Sir Roland, are you here? Are you still here with us? Yep. Yes. Sir, maybe we could ask you. There are actually several questions already. Uh, maybe we could ask you one while waiting for uh, the next person. Yes. Sure, okay yes. With you. Uh, All right, sir. Uh, sir, there are actually a lot. All right. So maybe I could just oh, ask madame, one. Yeah, I'm sure. uh, sir. <laughs> oh, madame. Uh, okay, sir. Um, what recommendations can you give to convince local clients to embrace this vertical and green roof land landscape direction for all their projects? How can you convince them? 
Well, as as I've said, uh, it is uh, yung yung skyrise greenery actually now has become as an amenity, you know. So when you have when you have green roofs, it uh, actually uh, it gives a lot more space. Sabi ko nga ngayon, especially pandemic, you no. Know, everybody wants to go out, you no. Know? So if you have uh, skyrise greenery in your development, it actually adds uh, uh, sa 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 development no uh, people want to buy properties like that but uh, of course we also need the support of the government really because uh, in the context of singapore if you do skyrise greenery the government will actually give uh, give you 50% back of what you have spent mm -hmm. on your on your skyrise greenery so mm -hmm. if you spend mm -hmm. like million pesos in Walmo, they will give you back 25 million depending on the scale of the project. Ganon, uh, ganon yung, yung ano eh, yung yung, uh, uh, yung push ng government nila. So we cannot do it alone. We have, we really yeah. need uh, everybody to to help us. But uh, to answer your question, uh, yun nga, uh, for me, it's yung, yung additional amenities for users. Yan yung isang pinaka-importante talaga na na we can uh, use to convince our clients. Okay, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, actually, there are like seven plus more questions, but maybe we could go back to that a little later. Uh, I yes, think... Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for that. Okay. Think, you you uh, can keep up. You cannot share screen. It's the only host can share for some reason. Okay. Yeah, so while we're waiting, just, just throw some questions. Hi. 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 Can I send you guys some new link? Because uh, I don't think I can share. Okay, sir. Um, maybe you could send uh, Joyce. Uh, yes, yes. I can. Uh, maybe the uh, sir Po could send you the link of the presentation. Can Can you do that? Uh, okay. Uh, yes, sir. So you're gonna download my presentation instead? Yeah, I. I Pern, Pern, can you share? Pern, can you share the screen? Uh, I I can share to uh, because I uh, need a permission uh, permission from host host disable. Uh, okay, Joyce, can do, you don't need to make me host, but uh, I cannot share. Can you let my assistant share? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Joyce. Please. Uh, I think they just need the access. I think, but I, based on my, I think they're given already the access. Can you just? Yeah, check? but ah, I here, think... here you go. Here you go. Let me check. I still cannot share screen at all. Uh, Joyce, there's another uh, TROP account. Yeah, can you check? All right. I think, sir, can you check now? Is it okay? Uh, still disable. Joyce, there's another. I, uh, yes, sir. All right. Thank you. The, the challenges of uh, online webinars. Uh, Good, Joyce. All right, I think. Are we okay? Uh, I cannot share. Yes. Okay. Too disable. Uh. Uh. -huh. Okay. Uh. All right. I, I I don't have access, Joyce, to uh, hang on. Uh, uh can I um share the file to um Miss Joy and then um Joy or share screen if I am. Yeah, I think that will be all right. Uh, yes, yeah. Okay. Okay, maybe, maybe we could do that. Yes. All right. Okay. So uh maybe while we <laughs> please, please ask Mr. Lowland first. I don't think all right. Is are you okay with that, sir? Well waiting. No problem, no problem. Go ahead. All, all right. right. <laughs> and I'm back. Sir so, Sir so Roland, you're our favorite, uh, one of our favorites. All right. Maybe we could ask the another question actually. Um, maybe we have something from the chat. Ah, sir, we have something from the chat. Um, one of our students is actually asking, 
uh, how do you manage tree roots so they will not cause damage to the roof structure? Okay, that's a very, very good question. Huh? The first thing you have to do is to put the right tree because at one of our projects, we actually used uh, ficus lirata and after 10 months or so, about 10 to 14 months, no, the roots has already invaded the pipes, the drain pipes, and the roots are as big as my arm. No? And the whole green roof has flooded because of that. So, yung, uh, yung pag, uh, pagpili ng uh, plant material is very, very important. You have to use trees that doesn't have a very, very aggressive root system, such as ficuses. That's one thing. And then, of course, meron namang na-apply. We call it uh, root barrier systems. No? They, there are root barriers, barrier systems that can be applied like a liquid application. There are also root barrier systems na parang plastic material naman siya. Ayan. But yung, yung, yung selection of trees, that is really very important. We, we learned a, a lot about that. No? A lot of, uh, uh, I mean, we're, the system that we've been using is not perfect. We, we're still perfect it, perfecting it uh, every day. And uh, those are the, the failures that we have learned a lot from. No? Yung pag, pag, pagpili talaga ng tamang puno. Correct. All right. So I think um, that's also a tie up with the landscape architect also in practice so that Maybe you could go recommend, recommending certain plants, maybe, and then you could advise from your end if that particular uh, plant material is, you know, based on your experience, does it work or something like that. Especially if it's a group, I think, especially for a, a green wall, I think it's also a very complicated system. How, how, yes. how uh, in terms of complicated, if uh, in terms of the, how complicated a system is, in comparison between a green roof and a green wall, which is more complicated to do, Sir Roland? Green, yung green wall. Because mm -hmm. of, because of uh, the challenges of how to reach them. Because, because if you have a green roof, most probably you will always have a stair to reach them or an, okay, an elevator. Sir. Pero if you have, a, a say, a 30-meter green wall, it is really very challenging. No? Kasi number one, actually... The, not only about yung plants, eh. Yung plants is one thing, you know. Sometimes they overgrow, they still look better. Pero yung structural system mo, mm -hmm. they are exposed to weather conditions, you no? Know? Uh, heat, sunlight, and of course, rain. You know? So yung pagkinalawang, you know, yung, uh, actually, ang kalaban mo dyan is not only bugs and overgrown plants. One of the challenges is rust, no? You have to make sure that the that the system that you're using will not just simply rust in a few years' time. Kasi pag kinalawang yung structural mo, you'll be doing it like a nightmare for every, every month kang nagre repaint every month kang nag yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I, I'm not really worried about the plants masyado eh, Because sometimes the plants, they will overgrow. Sometimes, you know, you can trim them every month. Sometimes every two months. But the structural mm -hmm. system is more important because uh, of safety issues. Because if they are really high, you know, you have to make sure that nothing falls uh, from 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 the structure itself. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a it's a uh, challenge also. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, sir. <laughs> uh, maybe I could ask. Uh, hang on, uh, so that we could uh, move on to the next. Uh, Presenter. Okay. Uh, I think we're just having some technical difficulties. Uh, okay. Hang on. Uh, Sir Roland, sorry. One more question. Yes, sir. Oh. I'm waiting. <laughs> sorry. Uh, hang on. Complicated. This is complicated. All right. Uh, oh, speaking of complicated. Uh, how complex is the irrigation system for vertical landscapes? And how much should a client invest for such a system? Uh, it, it really depends on, on the project. No? So uh, 
it depends on how big it is and how difficult it is to reach again uh, the green wall. Uh, actually, most of the challenges come from the water pressure. Now, in our experience, now, yung water pressure and yung, uh, water volume. Because sometimes, uh, even if you're in your part, kung maganda yung system, mo, your, if your irrigation system is working perfectly, but there is no water supply from the for instance, if it's a shopping mall, if the shopping mall doesn't have enough water supply at that day, then that becomes a challenge. So you always have to uh, really look onto those uh, parts. But if you ask me uh, how much it's going to cost, it really depends. No, uh, you, There are systems that you can do, uh, make it more cheaper. Like, for instance, if you have your uh, water tank above, that means you don't have to use uh, intricate uh, pump system you can just have the water flow through by gravity so by gravity itself you have water pressure and it becomes cheaper but i would say uh, the clients still have to spend like about 1700 something or or depends on, on a per square meter uh when you do uh auto irrigation system so uh, there's no really hard and fast rule on how much it's gonna cost but it's around there no 1000 to 2000 pesos to to even 3,000 pesos per square meter, depending on the uh, complexity of the project. Okay, sir. Thank you. <laughs> so yes. I think we're having some problems with the uh, sharing of the file. Um, I think uh, Joyce is um, actively seeking out uh, uh, how to make amends with that one. Um, so while waiting, sir, Roland, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think this is sent in the Zoom link. Uh, can you recommend the use of rainwater harvesting to use in irrigating green walls and green leaves? This yes, yes. By, or, or one of our professors. Yes, sir. Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Oh, Go ahead. Actually, Go ahead. Podium, our project, Podium, is actually using uh, non-potable water, which means uh, not only from rainwater, but actually also from uh, used water. No? Uh, so rainwater harvesting is really something that we have to uh, always uh, try to use kung, kung, kung pwede because it really reduces the maintenance cost of the project. However, when you use rainwater harvesting system, you have to have the proper filters because if you don't have proper filters when you're using uh, rainwater, uh, the emitters will clog. No, it will not last long. So you will have to. You really need to have a proper filter system uh, because of uh, yung rainwater is uh, not pure, eh, ba? Mga, there are a lot of particles, small particles that can really clog up an emitter. Kaya kailangan talaga may maayos na filter kung gagamit ng in water. But I do re recommend it talaga because it really uh, lessen, lessens the cost of the maintenance for the client side. Okay. Uh, thanks, sir. Actually, sir, um, I'm, I, well, for, for uh, I, I actually live in the Ortigas area. So the, the podium area is somehow uh, quite familiar to, to me. Um, and I actually enjoy looking at that part uh, when when walking along that side of Ortigas also. So, um, have you encountered any problems with that particular project? I mean, since, since a lot, a lot of projects. Because, for instance, right now uh, they just messaged me, no, while we are doing a presentation. Na, uh, yung supply system is actually having trouble, so we have to do some manual, manual, semi-manual irrigation. So. Yun nga, yung, the, the supply of water itself is really, really a challenge uh, uh, on, on big projects. And then the next one is yung maintenance nga. No? So normally, if you are a landscape architect and if you're uh, helping the client to get uh, quotations from contractors like us, uh, please, please always include maintenance. No? At least two years maintenance. Because for instance, uh, there are projects like... Uh, 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 well, I will not say the project, no. Pero the project, actually, uh, some of our projects, they don't, uh, they have not given us the 
maintenance program yet, the maintenance contract. That, that's why we were not able to go back to the project. Kaya madami nang patay dun sa, sa, sa plants because sometimes mawawalan ng tubig. So pag nawalan ng tubig, if you don't have enough water, mamamatay yung plants. And then if you don't have the maintenance contract, you know, uh, I mean, everybody still have to put uh, food above their table and roof above their head. No? So if you don't have uh, enough resources to pay your power because you tenants contract then hindi mo talaga mababalikan yung yung green wall system so it's really really very important to to include this during the bidding no not only kasi normally they will give you like one year maintenance contract eh, kasama na yun sa bidding but you always have to include yung continuing maintenance for the next three to five years no at least my quote ka doon lock up the price and tell the client okay this is what's your go this is how much it's going to cost you to maintain the project uh, in this length of time. Yeah. So it's, yun, yun ang pinaka-importante talaga yung maintenance. Eh. Even, even sa podium, you see, uh, there are a lot of areas there that we really need to maintain na, na hindi namin nababilikan uh, because of some issues. No? Okay, sir. Uh, <laughs> all right, hang on. Uh... Okay, sorry, sir, sir Roland, I think Joyce message, private message in Zoom. Uh, maybe you could check if... Uh, okay. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. I think he, she just asked you for the uh, link, sir. All right. So, um, while waiting for the... Uh, to fix uh, the uh, minor... Uh, Air, uh, situation. But can I have the host credential transferred to me? Yes, sir. Uh, palipad lang, sir, kay Joyce, na by accident yata na move sa inyo. Ay, okay, okay, okay. Yes, sir. So that Joyce could share the file. If it's okay, sir. Okay, okay. With, uh... Thank you, sir. All right. So again, we would like to thank each and every one of you who are here with us today. We're just having some minor uh, difficulties when it comes to the sharing of the screen. Uh, but do uh, be uh, settled. We are uh, trying to fix the situation. Uh, while waiting for that, we would like to thank um, our, the students who are with us here today. Um, thank you for those who have actually sent their questions. Um, we have several questions already, I think, through YouTube also. Um, hopefully, we have we still have time to address those a little bit later. Uh, I Currently, we have, I think, how many viewers online? Uh, I, I can't see. All right. So, uh, 35. I think currently, we, are, have, we have 35 more uh, viewers in the YouTube page. All right, so um, while waiting, Joyce, are we okay? Uh, yes, sir, uh, waiting lang. All right. So we'll just wait for the sharing of the screen. Uh, all right. So Joyce, I think you heard already the host now. So maybe we could share the screen uh, or the representation. Are we okay? All right, so I think currently downloading uh, the file. Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, thank you uh, once again, Sir Roland. Maybe we could hear, hear a little bit more again later from you. So, um, Landscape Architect Po, maybe we could start with your presentation. Hello. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, Finally. sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah, go well, ahead, sir. So, mm, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, first choice, uh, my name is Pop. Uh, I'm a landscape architect in Bangkok, Thailand. And uh, first choice in, uh, invited me to talk about the vertical green, but I'm not an expert in vertical green. Uh, not, uh, so I learned a lot from Mr. Lowland. Thank you for the presentation. So today I'm going to talk about something else, but uh, a little bit related to the vertical green, if you don't mind. Okay, so this is a picture of a tree in front of my soil, so in like an alley. Can, can you hear me? Everyone can you hear me, right? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. we can hear you. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me know if you have a problem. Huh? 
Uh, so this is a beautiful ficus tree right in front of my soy soy like an alley. I, I used to live in a condominium in the back in the middle of Bangkok. And it's a very beautiful tree, uh, very sculptural form. And then one day, uh, next please, sorry. <laughs> I thought it's my, it my presentation. Uh, this is the, the picture from the Google map. And then next please. And then one day I came out of my condominium and then it's gone. And because of the, the owner of the land behind the tree, they want to develop a community more. And they call the Bangkok government official to cut the tree for them. It's so stupid, you know, the, the Bangkok official government sent the truck to cut the tree for them. Next, and you see those little toys, those little dolls, they are like God, you know, normally we put all these uh, sacred dolls to protect the God or to be accompanied with the God. And then even the God cannot protect this tree. Next. Uh, this is a picture of uh, Siam Square in Bangkok. Siam Square is uh, one of the most famous shopping district. But you can see from this picture, we don't have any tree at all. Next. Uh, this is uh, one of the problems. We had a lot of this uh, telephone wire, electrical wire. And basically, every time the leaf touch all this wire, they're going to send the truck to cut them. And we have so many of these ugly wires everywhere. Next. And this is a green truck that's sent by the Bangkok government official. It, they, they paint it green, but actually they, every time they come, they cut the trees. Next, please. And at first I thought it's about the wire, but actually it's not about the wire. Look at this picture. They don't, we don't have a lot of wire, but the trees still keep getting cut lower and lower. Next, please. And in Thailand, we keep cutting trees for no reason. Keep cut, cut, cut. When the tree start to become beautiful, they send the green truck to cut it. And then they keep cutting lower and lower. Next, please. And finally, the tree dies, it's gone. Basically, the whole city, the government, we, we, our, uh, our government, uh, we, they don't love tree at all. Next, please. So according to WHO, uh, every city should have at least nine square meter of green area per, per person, per, per population. Each one of you should have nine square meter. But in Thailand, next please, especially in Bangkok, the prime area where the most expensive uh, residential are. Uh, next, please. Is it uh, only me? I, OK. We only have like less than four square meter per square meter. In the most prime area of Bangkok, we only have 1.5 square meter of green area. So I think it's a little bit uh, a little bit scary now. So as a landscape architect, I don't have a lot of public project, but I do work on the private project. So my strategy is like, next please. I'm thinking about all these little ants. The ant, each one of them is very tiny, and each one of them carry a very tiny bit of green. Next, please. But if we have more projects, if we have friends that also doing a very nice project, next, please. And more and more landscape architect in the future, you guys are gonna uh, graduate soon. If one of each one of us start doing a little bit of the green area, adding a little bit of the green area to our world, to our city, to our home, basically, I believe our world gonna gonna get better. So this is uh, the principle how I think in each of our projects. Next, please. Uh, the first project I'm gonna talk about is a uh, is a small residential project, and the nickname is Gosh and Creek. Next, please. I'm going to go fast and join. You have to <laughs> turn fast. This location is like in next. Uh, this is uh, the street from the, from the main road. Next, please. And then we're going to turn into the small soil. This is a small soil uh, with a lot of big houses or the rich people houses with a lot of trees. All these trees are basically private. Next, please. And then at the, at the end of the alley, there's a site. Uh, that on the one on the right, yes. Next, please. And next, please. So we look into the site, facing the site now. Next, please. So the requirement for the client is about the hidden, they wanted to create a hidden uh, sanctuary, sacred privacy. 
Next, please. And then because as I show you the picture, the neighborhood is of the rich people community. So they're thinking about all these rich family. Next, yeah, please keep going. <laughs> uh, they, they, they have the several generation already. So maybe the, their, their son, their daughter start to have their own family. They want to live by their own, but still close to the family. So they think it's a good target. And then they're also very dog friendly. So that is uh, the key. So basically the requirement is a vertical villas, courtyard garden, usable facilities, privacy and pet friendly. Next please. So I'm thinking about the timeless screen, the timeless skin that is, can stay forever. This is a very, uh, so this is like a, the, the big picture. Next please. And then this is a site. So architect, the A49, oh sorry, it's uh, slowed up. It's, uh, uh, so they put the building on two sides with the gap in the middle. Next, please. And then the first is arrival area. Arrival area, the drop-off is right, right next to the facility. So the light and the people gonna look into the facility a little bit uh, and not privacy enough. Next, please. So we provide something to screen the, the view and the light. So we create this uh, is a quick uh, sculpture in the middle. Next, please. Next, please. And then the pool, the pool, these are the competitors, a very similar price, similar size, but their pool is very small. Next, please. Next. 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 So we think these pool are not enough for us. Next, please. Because I think rich people, they want, of course, rich people want bigger pool. <laughs> So I decided to put all the area in between the two buildings as a, as a pool and then every ground floor unit has a pool access. Next. And then from the upper floor, they can uh, access the pool to the lobby. Next, please. So the main common area of the pool has to be close to the lobby. Next, please. With a very really long, as long lap pool as we can, which is uh, bigger than the competitors. Every room twist the wheel a little bit. Next, uh, so they don't face each other. Uh -huh. And the architect decided to put the green wall on one of their structure wall. But as a, so they're gonna have a, a, a series of eight story tall green wall. So the, the area in the, in the center is our scope. So it's a water. So I think about this picture. So it's not only about the, the, the building and the pool, but, it's, but how we're gonna change the building and the pool to become like a gorge and a creek. Next, please. And we use, uh, we use this uh, planter system, similar to Mr. Lowland said, but we don't have that catwalk because our area is so small. So we have no choice, but we have to use a 300 mm. But the, for the maintenance, it's an issue because we have to use the Spider-Man because we don't have the catwalk. And the water in between is a button spring uh, as a president, which is a natural pool. And uh, in the natural pool, it looks like a, like a stream. And then under the water, it has a, 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 a borders and a different uh, size of rocks. Next, please. So people can jump in the water. So this is a picture after two years after it's completed, when I went to visit. So you, you see this a, a, a green wall, a story tall, and then the water in the middle. Next, please. And then under the water, we the, in the in the natural stream, they have this kind of uh, different layer of rocks. Next, so we think we we try to create this a uh, natural uh, in, inspired nature inspired design into our pool. So we create this uh, step. Can keep going, please. So we create this a uh, borders of, of of rocks under the water to so become the sitting. It become the pool step. It become a lighting feature. Next, please. So this is uh, the final result. Next, please. And but at the bottom, we, we, we provide the gutter, but it's not as much as we want because of the area that we have. But as Mr. Roland said, it it's always has a maintenance issue all the time because of the some plant gonna die, some plant gonna, uh, some leaf gonna fall and water, splashing sometime when the water drop and hit the leaf. So this is uh, during the first days of completion. Next please. So during this one, uh, two years after, so we, we changed some plant. 
here and there. Mm -hmm. So it, it become like a, a little bit like a, like a hidden sanctuary that we want from the beginning. Next, please. And looking down, it's, it's quite beautiful to look, but, but keep, keep staying, but, <laughs> but because of the, you know, when you design uh, the, the project, as Mr. Roland said, you have to talk about the owner, how much they want to uh, maintain. Because for this project, once they sell, oops, can you go back? Once they sell to the, to the, uh, to the new owners, the, the, they don't want to pay for the maintenance. So one, they don't want to pay because we have to use the Spider-Man because we don't have a catwalk. It's a little bit expensive to hire the Spider-Man. It's about 50,000 baht per, per month, which is not a lot compared to this kind of uh, residential. But uh, they don't, the new owner don't want to pay. So we have to, they, they let it die and then they replace it with the, with the stone walls, which is a uh, nightmare, heartbreak for me. Okay, next please. So this is a man-made mountain in Ashton Jula Silong. So that a site, the green dot in the middle of the near the uh, education and business district. So this is a site. Next, please. So uh, we have a 12 meter clear for the road. That one is for the walkway. Next, please. And uh, we decided to create this a sunken garden in, in, in the uh, front yard, but I'm not going to talk about the front, uh, sunken garden. This is a pedestrian access to the project. Uh, the podium actually is a car parking, but uh, we don't want to have the, to, to show the park, car parking. So we try to change the car parking into the, into the man-made mountain. Next, please. Next, please. So the idea, this is a sunken garden in front. So we try to make, create the, 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 the big trees and make, we call it a bot botanic crown. So it looked like a, the green crown above the BC street and prevent the urban heat and pollution. Next please. And then we also try to maximize the green space up into the building. So we, from the ground floor, we look up, you see this canopy. And then from the top one, we looking down, we want to see a lot of this uh, big green canopy as well. So we try to add another layer of green on, on the top of the parking lot. And then on the side, we create a, a basically a bird sanctuary because we didn't allow the resident to go down because it's very narrow. So we create this uh, uh, facade full of green and then with only the service pathway. And then on the top is a rain garden. Next, please. So this one on the rooftop of the parking lot. And then we create this uh, a series of the, 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 the gravel area to collect rainwater. Next, please. And then create this a pathway and, uh, and uh, a little bit of the shade for we can provide a seating. Next, please. So this is a picture, it's a, it's a green roof. Uh, a little bit like a, it, 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 between the, what Mr. Lowland said, extensive and intensive. The thing is that we cannot, even though we have trees, but we're not gonna do the whole equal soil depth, the whole roof. We only select the certain area to create a bigger soil depth. And then the rest, we use a very thin soil depth for the lawn to, to, to reduce the loading problem. And then on the floor, it become like a, like a mountain. Next, please. So when you're looking down, so the green connect with the sunken court. Next, please. And then from the traffic, you see this a very large greenery on the on the lobby instead of the instead of the parking lot. So which is a quite a, quite a nice thing to to have for the city that don't have a green area like Bangkok. This is the pool I want to show you quick. So we have a fifty meter pool on the top uh, of the fifty floor, and then we also have a two more layers of the uh, onsen, so it's a hot water. So you have to climb up into the hot water. So you have amazing views, right? You, you, you're swimming in the sky. Next, please. Next, please. Okay. Next project is a uh, mysterious circles. Uh, it's also, uh, it's in the same plan. It's also uh, same developer, Ashton. So that is a corner of a very, very busy traffic area intersection of, of Bangkok. 
uh, this is a plan from the architect. So basically, they have two buildings, and then uh, fire lane in Bangkok. We have to have a fire lane around the building, <clears throat> and then in sorry, can you go back a little bit? In between the two tower, there's a old canal, but but it's only in in the registration because in the uh, according to existing condition when we were there, the canal is already gone. It, basically, the whole thing is like a fat uh, concrete surface for the parking lot and the road is very busy so we try to create something to uh, to reduce the carbon monoxide from the traffic mm -hmm. and then try to replace it with the oxygen so we create as much as green space in the front next please so a lot of green space in the front for for the lobby you can you can look at the green space next and then we also thinking about the water because Bangkok has a flood every year. So we try to reduce the, 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 the loading to the public drainage. So we try to take care of our water. Next, please. So from the, our single piece of green, so we drop into the a series of rooms, the landscape within the landscape. And then because of the social distance, we also put the seating space within those circles. So basically you are a little bit private from, from away from other people as well. Next please. And then the, the, the existing canal that is not there anymore, we make it like a red garden. So we drop the level down a little bit. And then when the water coming down, the water collect into these circles. And then it interconnect in between each other, and then it's, it deal, uh, it releases the water into our lane garden, and, and then in the plan is to release into the orange uh, the the canal later, but we decide not to release it to the canal, so only the rain garden. Next, please. So that is a typical section of this uh, uh, forest rooms, and then with the floating UFO sitting. Inside, so this is a real picture. So basically, we try to make it as much green as possible, or the pathway also very green. Next, please. So that is a is a forest room that also used as a rain garden. Next, please. So yeah, a little bit of the water feature at the edge to to prevent the people falling down. So there's some uh, sitting to for you to go down and look at the rain garden. Next, please. And this this one from the view from the top. Next, please. And for the pool, for the pool is is uh is also on the top of the building, not not a super top, but also uh, two buildings, so it has a two pool. But the pool is not very big, so we have to play with the very small area. Next, please. So this is a math model. Next, please. So we decide because it's a pool, so we need the area for the lounge chair, and the party, and the sitting. So we make this a, a hardscape deck integrate with the water like a finger and then at the end we have this sunken seat to look at the view but i think a little we want something a little bit more sexy so we provide this like a cantilever deck so you you can have a titanic moment with your girlfriend you can go up and then uh, take picture a little bit feel scared and then the people can still uh, swim under you next please so and we try to make it feel like it's a little bit like a stacking piece of paper so this is a view from the top and looking down to our new green area that we give it to the people of Bangkok. It's a semi-private. Next, please. Next, please. So it, you look at the traffic, it's very bad. So you, I, I hope that people can like at least relax their eye a little bit looking at our green. So the next one is in China. It's called the Ribbon Dance Park. Next, please. So it's a size on the top of the... Uh, terrain so there's a big highway below and the different level is about 10 meter different you see the, the the bridge you see the bridge so the bridge there's a community on both sides but the bridge basically 10 meter above the highway so there nobody walking because it's too steep so it become like a disconnection between the two community on both sides of the highway next please so the the client plan to build a very big clubhouse and they also, they're going to use as a sale gallery at the beginning. But they, they're going to spend a lot of money. They, they want to make sure the people can see them because it's 10 meters above the, the, the road. They're afraid nobody's going to see the project. Next, please. Next, please. So that's the first uh, day I went to the site. Basically, this is on the top of the train. No tree and everything flat. 
So the visibility is their concern. Next, please. So with, let, let me say next. <laughs> so, and then this is a, no, no, let, let me say next before you move, so easier. So this one is a green terrain. No, no, sorry, uh, next please. Uh, this is a green terrain on the road. C is about 10 meter high. Sorry, uh, let, let me say next when you move, okay? Uh, next please. So next please. So the client one, us to create a very big sculpture at the corner, so because they want they want the people to see their sculpture before passing by. Next, please. But I, for me, I don't want to create a big sculpture. I think it's a little bit useless. It's only for the visual. So I want to make it a little bit useful. Next, please. So I want it to create a a, a pathway that people can walk along. Next, please, and also connect to that. Uh, original bridge. The original bridge is about 10 meters above the road, so the, the, it will become the step very, very uh, steep. So I try to make it become like a stepless part. And then I'm thinking about this picture of the Chinese ribbon dance. Next, please. So basically, we create a, a, a curvy ramp through the very steep hill and try to reduce the, the, the slope for the old people and the, and the kid. Next, please. And it become the sculpture that the, the owner want. Next, please. So this is a, on two sides of the part where you can have this series of the wide uh, vertical uh, balustrade. But when you walk through, in, when you look straight, you can see the wall. But when you look on the side, you're gonna see through the gap of, the, of this wide vertical thing. So you're gonna see the, the garden move with you everywhere you go. Next, please. So this is the, the, the day I visit the construction and I met this old guy, the old gentleman, he walked across from the other side. He said, oh, he loved this part so much because before he cannot come because he's a little bit too, too tired. Now he can take his, uh, his kid, his grandchildren, and then he point to other people that he said, oh, that is his neighbor, that auntie is also, he you know. So it's a very, very happy moment to talk to them. Next, please. And then this is a road in, in trance going up to the to the to the drop off. Next please. So it's a little bit too 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 dense. So I try to create a rain garden on both sides to make the approach a little bit nicer. Next please. Mm -hmm. Next please. So you you go into to the to the clubhouse. Next please. And then we have a walkway crossing the, the road to connect to the botanical park on the left next please and this is uh, the pathway above the above the road next please and this is a uh, the, the bridge the new bridge next please and the, the thing is that the, the government they like it so much so they, they they decide to decorate the old bridge to look like our design uh, one thing about the china is they have a lot of vip even though their client is also very rich of them but they also have a vip of the of them, of, uh, for the bigger house, they, they, they want to treat differently. But to me, I, I don't like that. I, I want to treat all the customer as a VIP. So I try to change their mind about that VIP parking. So this is a drop off that is under the building. So it's a little bit uh, big and dark space. So I put the garden in the back of the, of the, of the parking, uh, of the drop off. So you can see the light at the end. Next, please. And then the parking is behind the wall. Next, please. So they have the, these are supercar parking, of course. So it's a bigger, better. But on the other side, normally the pool is a minimum. So I try to make the other parking feel like a supercar parking as well. So they have a bigger size. And then instead of looking into the, uh, the star parking, I try to create the, a view for them. Next, please. Or the star parking is right in front. So I put the star parking next place in under the roof and then create this uh, it's a planting and garden for the parking to look at. Next please. So you can see this view instead of seeing the, the star parking. Next please. And then I decide to have another skylight at the at the parking so you have a little bit more light source. And then the people instead of walking back to the road, they walk basically they're walking through the roundabout. Next, please. And then the roundabout, we put the water uh, in the middle. 
Next, please. And then we put a, 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 a screen layers of, of some elements to make, to create another experience before going to the clubhouse. Next, please. And then I cut the roof of the parking to allow the light to get down and then only leave the roof uh, as a walkway, cover walkway. And then we put the lowly tree, dancing tree there. Next, please. <coughs> so instead of the big and uh, dark uh, drop off, it become like a garden of light. So people have a special experience before going to the clubhouse. Next, please. So this is a view around from the road. So it become a very uh, uh, moving art. Next, please. Uh, so this uh, light can get down. Next. So this is a pathway that leads you to the to the to the clubhouse. Next, please. In the courtyard, in the courtyard before they have a big gallery at the top, and then they have a one single piece of waterfall, and then the corridor walking to the, the pond. Next, please. So this is a corridor that continues from our garden of light. But in next please, uh, instead of one big single water with a big uh, gallery room inside the uh, architecture, we decide to reduce this effect. Next, please. So we make it a three layer instead. Next. And then we punch the hole so the light can get down into this large gallery that nobody can look at. So we create this three layer waterfall. And then the water is not only falling this way, one waterfall can fall to the other side as well. Next, please. And then the, when you walk through this experience of the courtyard instead of art. So you, you appreciate water, you appreciate trees. Next. So this is a view. Next, please. From the outside and then this one from the inside. Next, please. And for the roof garden, normally they're not going to do anything. They're just going to create a concrete roof, but I ask them, you, you pay a little bit more because the people, the clubhouse has become like a, like a boat. You're looking down to this roof anyway. So they, they agree. So you can come out from that way. Next, please. And then you can go down to the mock-up unit as well, two-story high. So we create this uh, uh, double spiral and make it become like a sculpture. So I don't, I don't like to put another sculpture to decorate. Next, please. And then this one become like a porous court. So we collect water during the rainy season. Next, please. So the, the, the staircase becomes sculpture at night. And then you can continue. You can walk on the roof of that corridor that you walked in previously. You can walk on the roof. You didn't know. So you walk on the roof to the, to the roof garden. Next, please. And then the roof garden has a little bit of the loop and the sunken seat for you to sit in, in the landscape. Next, please. And then this one, we, we just put the grassy roof, basically very seasonal, very low maintenance. Next, please. And then this is during the winter, it looks very cold and uh, very, very pale. Next, please. And then in the summer, it changed, uh, some blooming, some color appears. Next, please. And then the, some have a tall grass during the sunny season. So it's very beautiful with the wind. And at night, the balustrade grow and become like a lit sculpture moving through the green landscape. Next, please. So this one on the top, you're looking down instead of looking at the concrete. So now you're looking something beautiful. Next, please. Okay, I think the last project. <laughs> uh, under the five cast chair is a small hotel in Bangkok. Uh, this one uh, hotel is a wheel machine. I think I remember uh, listening to a Woha lecture and he said, hotel is a wheel machine, which I agree. Next, please. Because if your hotel has this kind of wheel, of course, it's going to be successful. Next, please. Next, please. In Brazil, in Vietnam. Next, please. So this is our site. So our site is at the end of the soil. And uh, sorry, sorry, slow down. Next, please. So this is uh, the, the front of the soil, very, very busy. So it's not, when the, when the client called me, uh, I was uh, skeptical because the location is not ideal for hotel at all. This is uh, the location in front of the soil. We have everything, it has a highway, it has a train track. It has electrical pole, uh, by, uh, post box, mailbox, uh, tuk tuk, all these illegal chops, you know, it's so dirty. Next please. And when you get into the soil on the right, you have a 1960 buildings. 
Next, please. You continue, you see this uh, chop house, S7, seven, eleven. each of them is totally different. So this is uh, the front of our soil. You get into the soil on the left is the parking, on the right is another chops. Let's look at them. What they have, they have this uh, Chinese restaurant, cheap one. Next, please. Uh, Bangladesh, that's long. Next, please. And end of the soil, you turn right. So those townhouse are our, our site. Basically, we are one of them, but we didn't really know where. So we have only two blocks of them. So at the end of the alley, the, those are our site. They have the old ficus tree. In the, in the old day, the, the people, they, they plant the ficus tree at the, at the line between the land plot. So to indicate this is your land, this is our land. And then the tree just grow there without nobody care. And then it become quite big. So we walk underneath the, the trees. And then on both sides going to be the existing tower home that we're going to change into the uh, hotel. So this is one of them on right side and then the other side, next please. So this one is the other side. And then the house, the owner house, they're gonna change into the lobby and the pool and the parking. So I went into the site to looking for inspiration, but the, the house is already in the bad shape. Next please. And the garden is uh, also very bad. So instead of finding the inspiration from a little inspiration I have, when I went there, basically I lost all the inspiration because the condition is way bad. They have a way bad uh, uh, koi pond that no, no fish. So that wall, basically behind the wall is a big hospital. So the, this is the area where the, all the dining gonna be. So it, it's, it's really bad and nothing to see at all. Next please. But however, because of the neighbor, it's a, a very famous hospital. So the, the, the client think that they, they can find the customer for sure because of the this hospital is very famous. Next. And they have a patient from other countries. So instead of coming alone, normally they bring along the uh, family members or friends to stay to be their company. So the hotel is very close by, it's a perfect choice. Next please. So instead of thinking about the view as a selling point, but we don't have, so we're thinking about how to make this as comfortable as we can. So the most uh, important enemy is the temperature of Bangkok, which is very bad because we don't have tree and the street. Next please. So the main move is that we have to keep the tree, but it's not easy because you look at the size of the tree, basically it made the construction very difficult because uh, I told the team not only keeping the tree, we have to keep all the branch, we have to keep all the hair wood, cannot cut at all. So the owner agree and the contractor uh, decide to do so with everything with a small truck. So this is a site. So the, the pink is the existing town home. Next please. So that's a tree that we keep. Next please. So this is a condition. Next please. And then in Thailand, there's a word called Rom Po Rom Sai, which under, literally means under a five cast chair. It means you, when you are protected by, the, by some, some people you respect. So the tree basically become our Rom Po Rom Sai. So it protects us from the, from, the, from the light. Next, please. And then the architect also has this roof to, to reflect the light away as well. Next, please. And then the, the leaf, a series of leaf, layer of leaf, basically is much better than the roof because it's basically it filter the heat. When, when one, the light get down to the floor, basically it's a few degree cooler than the outside. Next piece. And then on the floor, it become like a visual concert. Next piece. And when you get down, when you get in, you have to do this. Then you go into the Chinese house. You have to open the curtain. And you hear the water, but you're not going to see the water before you going up the water. You, you see the water on both sides. Next, please. And because of the drop, the hotel is very small. So basically, that the drop off on the ground floor and all the room on the ground floor basically facing the drop off. Next, please. So as a result, they're not going to open the curtain at all. So we decide to make a living curtain for them to make it cooler in their room. So this living curtain is a, it's not a, just a planter box, but a, we put the planter in every floor and then let the plant climb up next. And it grow very well, it become a new facade of the building. Next please. And then it's a maintenance, next please. So it become like a very, very uh, sacred sanctuary. 
Next, please. From the room, you open the curtain, you see this uh, abstract painting of the silhouette of the leaf. Next. So it becomes like uh, some nice wallpaper to look at, a little bit busy. On the upper floor, you can see the pool. So basically you open the window and you do this with manual system. So you create that your, your own window. And the guests did that. So they can open the window and just looking back, they, they create this uh, different facade on the building. Next. And uh, all the dining is on the, a little bit above the ground floor. So they, they're, gonna, they're gonna see the wall of the hospital. So we, we put this green wall around to reduce the, the temperature to create the microclimate. Next please. And then we add some, some small trees to, to make the trees slightly above the ceiling to let the sea catch the light and let the light come down to the, the, the trunk of the tree. Next please. Next please. The so water going down to the floor, there's a view from the audio dining and the lobby. Next please. Next please. So basically you can you can stay outside all day because uh, the temperature is cooling down. So we every area we change the the we use the same design but but slightly different execution. Next please. Next please. Next please. And then on the roof, on the roof, we also put the water on the top so, so, to make it uh, very cool down below. And the tree on the top basically provide the privacy for the swimmer. Next, please. Looking out, you see, you're not going to see the neighbor at all because the tree already give you a good uh, backdrop. Next, please. So I think uh, all, the, all the pathway basically a natural ventilate. And use this climbing tree to filter the heat getting in the building. So next please. So uh, this one, this, this picture uh, is quite interesting because uh, not, in the first day we came to the site, nobody care about this tree, but uh, we decided to keep the tree and the tree make the hotel very, very successful. Every time the people come, they will take selfie with our tree. And so to me, without the tree, there's going to be in the hotel. But without the hotel, the tree, nobody going to pay attention as well. So something they're born from each other, even though they're not born at the same time. So we have to find, to find the design solution that, that uh, complement the, the condition of the site. Next, please. This, this, uh, this project for me is quite interesting for Bangkok or even uh, Philippines, because I think we have a lot of existing building that uh, didn't pe uh, prepare for uh, all the green roof, green system. But this kind of project basically proved to us that we can if, if we want to, to do it. Next, please. And then more and more, if the existing building can create the green roof, create the green wall, uh, and adding more tree, more and more, basically the, the earth gonna be better. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Thank you. I think I'm doing okay, right? Not too long. <laughs> Everyone still there? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Nancy Architect Paul. <laughs> that was good. very also very extensive. Yeah. But I think, <laughs> I think we are um, pressed for time. Maybe I could ask just last one question for um, the two um, uh, presenters for today, if that's all right, then we could hmm. call it a day. All right. Really? Nobody can ask anything? Come on. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I would just like to ask uh, our two speakers for today. Um, when it comes to elevated landscapes, such as green roofs or green walls, or projects that you have constructed uh, on higher ground, what do you consider as your biggest design-related challenge? And how did you solve or overcome those? Uh, the, the, the challenge, other than the basic challenge, of course, basic challenge is the loading, structure, maintenance. Those are basic challenge for me, which we have to care for every project anyway. But for each different project, basically the challenge is how, to, how we can bring up the most uh, interesting solution. Because for me, nothing is perfect. Whatever scheme you propose can have some pro and cons. So if you have everything correct, basically you get the B grade design because basically everything correct, tick, 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 tick. Uh, and then, but, but if, you, uh, if you do try to do something more bold, 
basically you can have a lot of mistake you know so try to balance those two things is a challenge for us of course we're not going to do we, we don't want to do the boring design that look the same even though we we know it's good you know but we try to challenge ourselves to to bring up some new solution so that that is challenge for us all right how thank to make interesting project and then at the same time sustainable thank, thank you sir po um sir roland your thoughts yes, for, for me actually uh were a lot of challenges but uh, i I, I actually was uh, working as a consultant also before. Uh, I was with Ong and Ong uh, at Singapore and uh, was working as an architect. But my mind shift from becoming a from a consultant and becoming a contractor has has really really changed a lot. You know, <laughs> now I because when I was a consultant, I was uh, you know always thinking of what is the next next good idea, what is the next good thing to 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 build, right? But now that I'm a contractor, my sh my shift uh, is to <laughs> to lessen the challenges of maintenance. It has always hmm. been a maintenance uh, an issue for me. Now that I am doing more of contracting rather than uh, uh, as a consultant. So uh, uh, especially now that uh, that it's a pandemic, uh, it, there's a curfew again in Metro Manila. We don't know when is the when whenever a lockdown is coming in nobody knows when that's coming and whenever we we have that you know uh, how do you even uh, maintain a project when there's no one around you know you cannot even go out so that's that's one of the challenges really that we face uh, uh, now that has, it is almost uh, the new normal uh, in, in in contracting All right. Um, thank you, uh, Architect Roland. All right. Sorry, that's that's the only time that we have for the day. Oh, both, come on. Both presentations actually are very um, extensive at that. Maybe we could have some separate also uh, presentations in the future if you would allow us to, if you would join us again in the future. All right. You want, so, you want no student, no more to ask? Okay. <laughs> thank you, sir. No so student, only, no after leaving. On behalf of the Environmental Landscape Studio Laboratory, we would like to thank our students who are here with us, uh, faculty members also, and our online participants through the YouTube link. Um, we would like to extend our gratitude, our heartfelt gratitude to our presenters for today, Architect Roland Aguliane and Landscape Architect Pok Kogkonsanti. So for our other webinars and lectures, you may follow the YouTube page of the Environmental Landscape Studio Laboratory. Um, it's free. You can search it on YouTube. So again, that's, that's for today. Um, we would like to thank everyone and thank you. Um, see you in the upcoming webinars. I think we have another one on Tuesday. So thank you, everyone. Um, Joyce, yeah? Yes, ma'am. Uh, maybe you could, um, Joyce, maybe you could stop sharing with the YouTube and then